Before we get into customizing our task model, I want to first show you how to use migrations to add columns to the database. So say that you create a table, and this will happen on a regular basis, and you want to add a new value to it. So we have title, description, and the project ID, but it'd be really nice if we had something that said if this task was complete or not. That's a pretty standard thing to expect. So I'm going to come here and say Rails G migration add underscore and there's two conventions here you can do it like this where it's uh, snake cased or you could do camel cased where you say add uh, we're going to say completed to that kind of thing um, so I personally I like the snake case because it's easier for me to read so I'm going to say add completed to tasks the most important thing here and what rails is looking at is the word add at the beginning and then to tasks or to whatever the table is at the very end so that's telling it what table that it's going to automatically add to so I'm going to do add completed two tasks and I want this to be completed and I want this time for the value to be a boolean and so this is a uh, this is something that the only values that are possible are going to be true and false hit return created our migration and let's go take a look at it before we run it so open this migration and you can see that because we put right here we put a very descriptive title with a specific naming convention it knew right away to use this tasks table which is very cool this saves a ton of time you don't have to do this yourself uh, so what it's doing just so you can see and it's really good to get an idea of how this whole system works you can see that this is just a plain Ruby class. It, it has a class name of add completed two tasks. It inherits from active record migration. And this is a method that's in active record migration that we're customizing. And we're using add column and we are, add column is a method and we're passing tasks as a table name completed as the column name and then the data type of boolean so just so you know there's not magic that's happening with migrations or things like that this is just ruby code and then we're going to run a command to get this ruby code to run so rake db migrate and after this is run we can go look at the schema file and see if it changed so everything looks like it worked come back to the schema file and now you can see we have a boolean value that says completed right here and so now we have access to it and now in the next video we're going to start adding that completed value in uh, some of the different callbacks into this task file.